Hi, here's Li Huang from Hughes Training Group. Today, I'm going to talk about the Jupyter Terminal installation and commissioning procedure. This is part two. After we finish the terminal installation, we are going to commission the site. First, we need to load the installation information to the terminal. Here, we are going to load the installation parameters through the laptop. The laptop must set up to communicate with the terminal first. Power on the IDU and connect the installer PC to the terminal LAN 1 port. Make sure the PC LAN port is set to obtain IP address automatically. Verify the installer PC IP address. A new IDU has a default LAN port IP address of 192.168.0.1. The IDU should automatically assign IP address 192.168.0.1. .2 to the installer PC. Ping the IDU to verify the connection. Open the browser on the installer PC and access the terminal using the address 192.168.0.1. Here we have a video clip to show you how to enter the installation parameters into HT2300 terminal. Remember, depending on the terminal type and the software release version, the installation parameters can be different. Please refer to the related Hughes Jupyter Terminal installation menus for details. Here is the Terminal System Control Web GUI, also called Terminal Basic Web GUI. You can see this terminal type is HT2300. It is said not commissioned and the SEN. SEN refers to site account number. If the terminal is commissioned, the terminal site ID will be listed and the SEN. Click the fade data I at the top to open the terminal advanced web GUI. Here it is the advanced web GUI. From the menu on the left, click the plus symbol beside the installation. Then click a plus again beside the advanced. First, we need to load SBC file to the terminal. Click upload the SBC BC config link from the menu. Click the browser button on the right. Select the sbc.bin file in the laptop. Click the upload button to upload the file. Wait for the confirmation. Here it is. You can view the SBC file by clicking display SBC config from the left menu. Next, load ODU file. Click the upload button to upload the file. Wait for the confirmation. 
it is said to reboot the terminal. Click the reboot link at the top to reboot the terminal. Wait for a few minutes for terminal to reboot. Click the home link at the top to open the terminal basic web GUI. The page is back. The terminal has been rebooted. Go to the advanced web page. Click the install link at the menu. A new separated web page occurs. It is the terminal installation page. Through this page, the terminal will go through three stages one by one. Install parameter, pointing, and the registration. This is the first page install parameter screen. This screen may be different for different terminal type. Refer to the related Hughes terminal installation menu for details. Enter site latitude in degree and minutes. Select North Hemisphere or South Hemisphere. Enter site longitude in degree and minutes. Select East Hemisphere or West Hemisphere. For linear radio information, make sure the ODU file is the one you uploaded. For the initial ranging attenuation, ODU reference voltage and the 10 MHz reference signal, set them according to the site requirements. Cable loss calibration is for transmit cable calibration. Set it according to the site requirements. If you said to do auto cable calibration, you must have the Hughes yellow color antenna pointing tool installed on the transmit cable. Select a satellite. Click the Submit button. The terminal will enter the pointing mode. Here is the installation parameter screen for HT2000. It is much simpler than HT2300. It does not require to load ODU file. SBC file is required for all the terminal types. Site longitude and the latitude is required for all the terminal types. Now let's check the installation and commissioning timeline again. After we enter the installation parameters and click the submit button, the terminal will be put into the antenna pointing mode. Here's the antenna pointing screen. The pointing screen will guide the installer to perform antenna pointing. It provides basic information for installer to perform antenna alignment such as azimuth, elevation, and uplink polarization. 
It also provides the link information, such as beam and all route information. The pointing screen also provides the receive signal graph and the value to guide the installer for fine adjustment. SQF refers to signal quality factor. The SQF value divided by 10 is the signal S node. For example, SQF 112 means the S node is 11.2. Maximum SQF is the maximum all route SQF that the site has achieved. Current SQF is the current measurement. Do not close this screen until antenna pointing is complete. An installer will first perform course antenna alignment based on the information on the pointing screen, azimuth, elevation, and polarization. Then the installer performs fine adjustment based on the all route SQF monitoring. The installer needs to adjust the antenna to achieve the SQF value as high as possible. Here is a video clip showing how an installer to perform antenna pointing with the Hughes antenna pointing tool. Now we're outside ready to point the Echostar 17 antenna. Here we have the DAP2 connected to the antenna and we can tell it's the DAP2 because it's orange in color and features a speaker on the front. If we turn the DAP around, we can see the RG6 cable running from the LNB to the LNB mark side of the DAP2. Then it's marked IDU on the other side, and an RG6 cable runs inside to the back of the satellite modem. So here we're looking at the DAP2, and I'm gonna explain the buttons and the functions. The DAP2 again is orange in color with a speaker, that's how it's identified. We have three main buttons, button one, button two, and button three. If the IFL voltage is showing, which should be close to 48 volts, we can hit button one to bring up a menu that will start with contrast. We can hit button two to show the contrast. Right now it's set at 41% escalating. We can hit button two and it will increase the contrast to make the screen darker if it's hard to read. Uh, we had it pretty good, so I'm gonna go back to 40 by using button one. When you get it where you want it, and there, that's good enough, I can hit button three and it'll take me back to the menu. Okay, so menu contrast is showing again. Now I'm gonna hit button one and show, it now shows menu volume. From the volume, we can hit button two and it will show what the volume is preset at, which is 100% escalating. Uh, this is where I prefer it, but if you wish to lower it, you could hit button one and it will lower the volume. When you get it where you want it, you can hit button three. I'm gonna leave it, put it back up to the highest, 100%. I like it nice and loud, makes it easy to, to use. And then hit button three to save it. Once it's saved, menu contrast will be displayed. Button three is the advanced button, and that's the button we're gonna use now to uh, begin pointing. Upon pushing button three, it shows DAPT version 3.1, COM startup, it shows logging voltage measurement, logging done, and we needed the button three to go to pointing. Pointing is now indicated with a number on the left, then a number on the right. 
The number on the left is the highest achieved signal since we began pointing. The number on the right is the current value. So as I move the dish left to right, it will actually increase on the left to the highest of whatever signal it's seen. On the right will be the current value. So the number on the left will always be the highest. So now I'm gonna point the dish. I'm gonna start by course pointing by finding the satellite, by moving the dish left and right until I find the signal. I've already preset my elevation and the actual tilt or uh, skew of the dish. So now I'm gonna move it slowly to the right and see if I can find signal. Again, I have to go slow. And we, the adapt is slowly increasing. I'm at about a 29. Now I found the signal. And now I start peaking it left to right. And you can hear the volume increasing and it escalating uh, and getting faster and shorter beeps. Then as I go past it, you'll see here the tone come back down. So again, I'm gonna move back left and right until I peak it. And now I've got it over 130. So at this point, I'm gonna lock down the three bolts. Now to peak the dish, I'm gonna use the fine azimuth adjustment and the fine elevation adjustment to peak it. I always start with azimuth, so I'm gonna to go to this bolt and make sure uh, the bolts underneath are loose enough to do that. I've already checked that, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this bolt and then peak the dish by So now I move it left and right. In this case, I'm moving it to the left. I can see my signal went down, so I'm gonna move it back to the right. And then I'm watching the DAPT and, and verifying the numbers going up. We can hear the tone increasing as well, so we know we're doing it right. And now I keep going till I peak it. I have a nice high 130, mid 130 signal strength. And keep going till I see it come down a little bit and then I'll know to go back the other direction. Yep, and it started to drop. So now I'm gonna go back the other way. And this time I'm gonna get it back to the high 130s. Okay, I've got it about as high as I can in azimuth. Now I'm gonna move on to the elevation. So, so now I'm gonna move on to the elevation. So I'm gonna use a fine elevation bolt and see if I can peak it any higher. And I was able to get it a little bit higher. Now it's coming back down again. So I'll go back the other way and peak it. And that was just shy of 140, so I can peak it back up there. So now I've got it right at the peak. So now I'm ready to lock down the bolts. So I can lock down the elevation bolts on the left and right. As well as the one for the fine tune adjustment. So now it's nice and tight. Then I can go underneath here and tighten down the fine azimuth adjustment bolts that are underneath. Okay, now that we've got it pointed and all the bolts have been tightened down, we're gonna hit button three. Now that we hit button three, it shows store results. Hit button three again to accept that. It will then ask yes, hit button three. It shows the advance button equals yes, so hit button three. Now that we've completed pointing the antenna, 
we hit button 2 to exit pointing, it takes us to the registration tab. Here we see ranging in progress.